Before we get started, I want to acknowledge that the techniques shown in this video go outside the standards and beyond the intended use of a personal escape system. They're meant to be implemented to save a victim's life and your own when there are absolutely no other options available. Every escape system is different. Some are more versatile and more effective than others. You have to evaluate your system to see if these techniques are practical and if they'll work for you. I sincerely hope they do and that you find this video useful. Okay, in this part of the video, we're going to show you how you can use your escape system to rescue a fellow firefighter. The first step to this whole process is to ensure that we establish fall arrest protection. Anytime you're doing training, you want to safeguard the student. Here, we have the full body hasty harness attached onto the victim. If you've never seen this before, you can take a look at uh, my YouTube page. We put together some videos on how to tie a full body hasty harness for training or for rescue. Shows two applications, one for attachment in behind and one attachment in the front. And then we have the belay line staff. So always make sure you have that in place. In this operation, the first component is to do a quick assessment of the firefighter's gear. You want to see if the firefighter has an escape belt or a seat harness. Now that seat harness could be on the outside of their gear, or you're seeing it more and more frequently with manufacturers. You can have it integrated into their gear. Typically that's access underneath the coat. If they have an escape belt or seat harness, you're going to want to attach into that for two reasons. First of all, it's approved for rescue or escape. Second, it's a low attachment point, which is what we're shooting for. We want a nice even level plane between attaching to myself and the victim. This prevents the possibility of shock loading the system and injuring the victim. So try to keep that even. If they don't have an escape belt or seat harness, we're going to wrap around their waist and secure in. The first step in deployment is to remove the lead end of your system. That's your hook and DCD. You're also going to need a secondary carabiner. I keep mine attached to my escape belt, remote on my system. Now there's a very specific way to connect the carabiner. You're going to hold the hook as you see here. Take the carabiner and clip it to the outside portion of the handle. Then rotate the carabiner so the gate opening is up and the lock is facing the same side as the point. Now I need to take out some slack. This is a little bit easier to do when your system isn't pre-attached. I'm going to grab the hook and carabiner and the DCD and draw it back just like a bolt, almost to the full extent of my reach. How much you take out is going to be dependent on the size of the victim. Go ahead and let go of your DCD and you're going to face the victim so their left is on your right or the same side that your escape system is coming out on. Hold the hook and carabiner in your right hand like I have it here. You're going to bring your system around the victim's left, around their back, and underneath their SCA back plate. That's critical. I'm going to bring the system back around in front, and I'm going to take the rope and clip it into the gate of the carabiner and lock it off. Rotate the hook so it's up and then bring your rope around the front of the hook. Everything should be midline or in line with their sternum and belly button. Come around on the victim's left and if your system isn't pre-attached Here's the point where you would connect in your belt or harness and lock off the gate. My uh, tension or, or slack is just about perfect. You want anywhere from six inches to about a foot or no more than a foot from the hook to the top of your DCD. I want the hook in this orientation. That's the reason why I bring the rope around the front. If I didn't do that, the hook could flip down like so. And this is, the position, this is the position that I don't want it in. If it dropped into this location, as the victim rolled out, it could hook the sill and prevent their exit. That's why you want the hook up. I get firefighters questioning all the time, is there a threat of the hook in this location biting into the victim's midsection? And all I can tell you is that we've never had a problem. There's a little bit of play here in the hook yet, and the point isn't directly facing the midsection. 
And with the protection of the gear, you really don't even feel it. You're going to feel more of the rope biting around your waist than you're going to feel the hook. I take up position on the left side and guide the victim to the window. They're going to do a left sided rollout. So they're going to hook their hand to control their exit and roll out. When they do that, I'm just watching out for their hand and arm position so that it doesn't get caught underneath the rope. All right, the most critical component of this escape or evolution is a transition from the room to outside the window. What we found to be the most efficient way to get out is to just do a, a head first rollout. Now the victim can go left or right, wherever they choose. They're going to take one arm and hook the sill plate and extend the other arm in front of them in a superman position or semi-superman position. This reduces the profile. The window that we're going through right now is 22 inches wide, so it's kind of simulating the narrow casement. If he says he's going to be hooking his left arm, that's the side I want to position on because I don't want to be kicked uh, into the face with his legs. Comes in, left arm. Left arm, close proximity. My knee's in the sill wall, he rolls out. I let the DCD get pulled right out. Okay, you got the rope, rope. Lower and down. Once the victim is safely extracted, if conditions in the room would continue to go south, I can still deploy my system for self-rescue. The escape artist allows for that versatility. On initial deployment, the DCD is self-breaking. However, when I reverse the system, I lose that feature. But there's still enough friction within the device that I can affect a safe and controlled exit. The first step is to remove the remaining rope from your pocket and establish an anchor. In this case, I'm going to use the tool on the wall. So I'm going to make a loop. It doesn't have to be a figure eight knot. It can be an overhand knot. Just something large enough to insert the fork end of a halligan bar or the handle of an axe. With my anchor established, I can exit. An added benefit to this operation is that if there's anyone available on the ground, including the victim, that can staff the end of the rope, they can act as a bottom blade. If I would ever lose control at any point during my exit, they can pull down on the end of the rope and arrest my fall. Regardless, I still need to maintain break hand discipline throughout this operation. I got the rope, brother. Go.